Modern sewage and water treatment have virtually eliminated cholera in industrialized countries. But cholera still exists in Africa, Southeast Asia, and Haiti. The risk of a cholera epidemic is highest when poverty, war, or natural disasters force people to live in crowded conditions without adequate sanitation. Hello guys and welcome to Microbiology Insider. If you are new to this channel, I do videos about disease caused by microorganisms and microbiology lectures in general. Before I write on, please do endeavor to hit the subscribe button and turn on your notification so whenever I upload a video, you'll be the first to know. I will be covering the following objectives. What is cholera? Symptoms of cholera? Causes of cholera? The complications associated with cholera infection? How to prevent cholera? and how can cholera be diagnosed. Cholera is an infectious disease caused by the bacteria Vibro cholerae. People typically acquire cholera from contaminated water. Most people with cholera have few or no symptoms, but some will experience severe diarrhea and dehydration. In severe cases, immediate treatment is necessary because death can occur within hours. This can happen even if you were healthy before you contracted cholera. Most cases of cholera that cause symptoms causes mild or moderate diarrhea that is often hard to tell apart from diarrhea caused by other problems. Others develop more serious signs and symptoms of cholera, usually within a few days of infection. Symptoms of cholera include Diarrhea Cholera-related diarrhea comes on suddenly and can quickly cause dangerous fluid loss as much as a quart an hour. Diarrhea due to cholera often has a pale milky appearance that resembles water in which rice has been raised. Nausea and vomiting Vomiting occurs especially in the early stages of cholera and can last for hours. Thirdly, we have dehydration. Dehydration can develop within hours after cholera symptoms start and range from mild to severe. A loss of 10% or more of body weight indicates severe dehydration. Signs and symptoms of cholera dehydration include irritability, fatigue, sunken eyes, a dry mouth, extreme thirst, dry and shriveled skin that's slow to bounce back when pinched into a fold, little or no urinating, low blood pressure, and an irregular heartbeat. Dehydration can lead to a rapid loss of minerals in your blood that maintains the balance of fluids in your body. This is called an electrolyte imbalance. An electrolyte imbalance can lead to serious signs and symptoms, such as muscle cramps. This results from the rapid loss of salts, such as sodium, chloride, and potassium. Secondly, we have shock. This is one of the most serious complications of dehydration. It occurs when low blood volume causes a drop in blood pressure and a drop in the amount of oxygen in your body. If untreated, severe hypovolemic shock can cause death in minutes. A bacterium called vibrocholerae causes cholera infection. The deadly effects of the disease are the results of a toxin the bacteria produces in the small intestine. The toxin causes the body to secrete enormous amounts of water, leading to diarrhea and a rapid loss of fluids and salts. Cholera bacteria might not cause illness in all people who are exposed to them, but they still pass the bacteria in their stool which can contaminate food and water supplies. Contaminated water supplies are the main source of cholera infection. The bacterium can be found in 
surface or well water. Contaminated public wells are frequent sources of large-scale cholera outbreaks. People living in crowded conditions without adequate sanitation are especially at risk. Seafood Eating raw or undercooked seafood, especially shellfish that comes from certain places can expose you to cholera bacteria. Most recent cases of cholera in the United States have been traced to seafood from the Gulf of Mexico. Also, we have raw fruits and vegetables. Raw unpeeled fruits and vegetables are a frequent source of cholera infection in areas where there is cholera. In developing countries, uncomposted manure fertilizers or irrigation water containing raw sewage can contaminate produce in the field. Lastly, we have brains. In regions where cholera is widespread, grains such as rice and millet that are contaminated after cooking and kept at room temperature for several hours can grow cholera bacteria. Everyone is susceptible to cholera, with the exception of infants who get immunity from nursing mothers who have previously had cholera. Still, Certain factors can make you more vulnerable to the disease or more likely to have severe signs and symptoms. Risk factors for cholera include Poor sanitation conditions Cholera is more likely to flourish in situations where a sanitary environment, including a safe water supply, is difficult to maintain. Such conditions are common in refugee camps, impoverished countries, and areas afflicted by famine, war, or natural disasters. Reduced or non-existent stomach acid Cholera bacteria can't survive in an acidic environment, and ordinary stomach acid often serves as a defense against infection. But people with low levels of stomach acid, such as children, older adults, and people who take anti-acids, H2 blockers, or proton pump inhibitors, lack this protection. So there are greater risks of cholera. For reasons that aren't entirely clear, people with type O blood are twice as likely to develop cholera compared with people with other blood types. Household Exposure You're at increased risk of cholera if you live with someone who has the disease. Raw or undercooked shellfish Although industrialized nations no longer have large-scale cholera outbreaks, eating shellfish from waters known to harbor the bacteria greatly increases your risk. Cholera can quickly become fatal. In the most severe cases, the rapid loss of large amount of fluids and electrolytes can lead to death within hours. In less extreme situations, people who don't receive treatment can die of dehydration and shock hours to days after cholera symptoms first appear. Although shock and severe dehydration are the worst complications of cholera, other problems can occur such as low blood sugar. Dangerously low levels of blood sugar can occur when people become too ill to eat. Children are at greater risk of this complication, which can cause seizures, unconsciousness, and even death. Secondly, we have kidney failure. When the kidneys lose their filtering ability, excess amounts of fluids, some electrolytes, and wastes build up in the body, a potentially life-threatening condition. In people with cholera, kidney failure often accompanies shock. Low potassium levels 
People with cholera lose large quantities of minerals, including potassium, in their stools. Very low potassium levels interfere with heart and nerve functions and are life-threatening. Wash your hands with soap and water frequently, especially after using the toilet and before handling food. Rub soapy wet hands together for at least 15 seconds before rinsing. If soap and water aren't available, use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer. Drink only safe water, including bottled water or water you've boiled or disinfected yourself. Use bottled water even to brush your teeth. Hot beverages are generally safe as are canned or bottled drinks. Don't wipe the outside before you open them. Don't add ice to your drinks unless you made it yourself using safe water. Eat food that's completely cooked and hot and avoid street vendor food if possible. If you do buy a meal from a street vendor, make sure it's cooked in your presence and served hot. Stick to fruits and vegetables that you can peel yourself, such as bananas, oranges, and avocados. Stay away from salad and fruits that can't be peeled, such as grapes and berries. Cholera can be diagnosed by identifying the bacteria in stool or by using a rapid cholera dipstick test. We've come to the end of this video. Before you leave, please do endeavor to hit the subscribe button, turn on your notification, and follow us on all our social media platforms.